Do you recommend checking the soil pH with like either the one of those blue lab probes that go right into the medium or doing a runoff pH test when growing with organic inputs? No. Um, I mean, it depends, right? I, if you know nothing and you don't know where the soil is from and you're just trying to figure out a baseline, maybe getting a lot of measurements on it would be good. Um, but for instance, I might have a high pH just from having lots of calcium in there and the, the soil not really being used and wet. And you probe it and you're freshly potting up and it reads a little high and you start tinkering with adjusting the pH and you mess something up. Where a lot of times, um, you know, you send it to the lab and it might be slightly high pH, but you know, a lot of our crops like a higher pH above neutral and it's fine. And so we shouldn't freak out. Living soil, like I mentioned, the root tip and everything has a way to, to buffer. And so that enables us to take advantage of the buffering qualities of the soil. Like in hydro, if you're not exactly in the pH, the nutrient won't go into the plant. But in soil, we have a lot of buffer room. Um, and so I think that that does change things a lot. So how about EC or P some people do PPM? Would you monitor that or recommend people monitor that when they're growing with organic inputs? No, I mean, some outdoor growers, some growers do when they're making a lot of um, teas and solutions. And I won't, I, I'm not going to say that you're trying to target some PPM, um, some EC level, but it gives you some indication. Like if you are a grower and you just fly to someone else's farm for the first time and you've used these tools, you could go, oh, the water's pretty clean. It doesn't have a lot in it. I have my meters. It tells me what's going on. And you might be able to get up to speed faster. But um, probing the soil pH, like I said, may not really tell you as much in the sense that a lot of people would test their runoff. And I'm like, well, their runoff may have nothing to do with what the soil. So we'd recommend a slurry test. And I know those pH meters work, but um, I kind of lost track when I was talking the last time. But when it comes to the pH, if you send your soil to a lab and they tell you why, Sometimes there's just a little bit too, too much magnesium in there and it jacks your pH, but, but it can be dealt with. And so just getting the pH reading on its own, although it might be valuable, it doesn't really tell you how to fix anything. And so now you're just going, well, do I pH down my water? Not if it's sodium in your soil that's causing the high pH. And sodium and magnesium can just jack your pH really high. Um, and so what we typically recommend is if you're seeing a high pH in a soil and you've tested and now you're convinced that there's a problem, you can use a tablespoon of gypsum in a four or five gallon bucket of water and you can leach that through the soil to there's good amount of runoff. And the sulfur that's in the gypsum will rip the excesses out of the soil and flush them out and replace them with calcium. And a high pH soil that's high calcium crushes. A high pH soil that's got magnesium and sodium and potassium, it's just terrible. So it's not always the pH and that's why I recommend sending it to a lab so we can see what built that pH. What does it consist of? Um, but the EC and the PPM meters, I know some people that they're like, wow, this recipe I make with the compost tea, it works so well every time they'll get a reading and maybe next time they do it, they'll see if the reading is the same and they'll start to share that as kind of a baseline. But right away, you can see some crazy readings in some of these organic solutions and it doesn't really mean that it's plant available. And so, um, in my daily life, I don't use a pH EC, any of that pretty much ever. So this clip is brought to you by AC infinity. Use discount code MrGrow at 15 to save on any of their products.